Hi, boys and girls. Welcome to Virtual Team Jesus Sunday School. I'm Deaconess Kim. Today, we'll wrap up our Kingdom Quest Carnival by reviewing some of the stories we've learned about the leaders of God's people. We'll highlight again that the leader God is looking for isn't a human king or president, although God can and does even use leaders who make mistakes to lead his people. We'll talk about the best leader, the leader we should all follow, Jesus. We'll learn today to let Jesus, the King, be your leader. The key verse for today is Psalm 31, 3. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. But first, we'll start with a little bit of song time. First, we'll sing our spotlight song, Lord, Help Us Ever to Retain. Today, we'll be finishing it all up with one more game where you can test how much you remember. Hi, Deacon, it's Kim. Hi, kids. Well, hey, Gordy. It looks like you're really getting into our stories about kings. You're even wearing a crown today. Well, that's because if you're looking for a leader, someone to be king, well, that should be me. Hey, wait a minute. Why should it be you, Gordy? Well, I think I know a lot about being a leader. We've been learning about leaders since the beginning of summer. We have been. Well, okay. Tell me what you know, Gordy. Well, I know there are leaders in the Bible that don't pay very close attention to what God wants. Instead, they do just whatever they want. No kidding. And that got them into lots of trouble. Well, that's true. What else? Uh, even the good leaders, like King David, made mistakes. But when they turned to God, God forgave them. I know that too. David said he was sorry, and even though he messed up, God still blessed him. Good point. What else did you learn about leaders? Well, I learned the best king would probably be a third grader. What? Yeah, what? <laughs> yeah, a third grader like me. Don't you agree, kids? I know all those kids at home want to see a third grader be king. I don't think so. There's no way you'd be a good... Wait a minute, Judy. Why should you be King Jordy? Because I could get the most votes. I just know all the kids would all vote for me. King Gordy! Gordy, you don't vote for a king. They don't? Well, they vote for a president. Well, they do, but Judy's right. People don't vote for kings. How do you get to be a king, then? First, you have to be a prince or a princess. That's right. You're born into royalty. When God chose David as king, the plan was that David's son, Solomon, would be king after him. And then Solomon's son, and then his son, and so on. Even when some of those guys are bad kings? That's true. Ah, I think a third grader could do better. <laughs> Well, maybe so, but let's see how much you can remember about how God is looking for a leader. 
we'll play our last carnival game. So this is our very last Kingdom Quest carnival game. It's called Ring Toss Review. There are two challenges to this game. First, toss a ring over the peg. Second, answer a question correctly. That sounds easy enough. Yeah, I can do that. You'll take turns tossing the rings, trying to get it on. Every time you get one, you get a chance to answer a question. You kids at home can try to answer the questions too. If you get the question right, you'll get a point. And whoever has the most points at the end of the game will be our Ring Toss Review winner. Oh, that will definitely be me. Not so fast. You're getting too big for your britches. I bet I'll win. It sounds like you are both all fired up. Are you ready to play? Let's go. All right, Gordy, your turn. See if you can get a ring. Okay. Oh, not, try, not quite. Oh, nice try, Judy. Gordy? No! All right, Gordy, here's your question. David was called a man after God's own heart. What does this mean? A, someone who's trying to build a sculpture of God's heart. B, someone who follows God and does what God wants. Or C, someone who sends God a valentine. Oh, that one's easy. It's B, someone who follows God and does what God wants. Very good, that's the correct answer. Okay, Judy, it's your turn. Take a toss. Oh, not quite. All right, Gordy. Ooh, almost. Oh, not quite, Judy. Give it a try. Oh. Hey, there you go, Judy. Okay, here's your question. David made some mistakes when he was king. One time he sinned by stealing another man's wife. David tried to cover up his sin, but God sent his prophet, Nathan, to point out David's sin. How did Nathan do this? A. Nathan told a story about a rich man and a poor man. The rich man stole the poor man's pet lamb and served it for dinner to a traveling guest. Or B. Nathan guessed what David did wrong by playing the game 20 questions. C. Nathan used a crystal ball to find out what David had done. Oh, I think it's A. Nathan told a story about a rich man and a poor man. Very good. That's correct. Okay, Gordy, the toss is yours. All right. Hey, yeah! Right away. Okay, okay, here's the question. When David realized that he should not hide his sin from God, he turned to God to ask for forgiveness. What did God do? A. God told him to do more good things so he could forgive him. B, God ignored him. C, God forgave him. C, God forgave him. Exactly, there you go. Okay, Judy, your turn. Not quite. Oh. Hey, yeah, there you there. go. Okay, Judy, David's son Solomon had a dream that God said he would give him whatever he asked for. What did King Solomon ask for? A, money and riches. B, a wise and understanding heart. Or C, a powerful army. Ah, uh, did he wish for money and riches? Oh, not quite. Solomon is known for being super wise. He asked God for B, a wise and understanding heart. All right, Gordy, your turn. Hey! Oh, yeah! Right away. Okay. Rehoboam was too big for his britches. That meant he didn't listen to God's advice or to wise leaders. Because of this, did all of the Israelites want to follow him? Is it A, yes, because he was still Solomon's son? Or B, no, the ten tribes in the north did not follow him? Or C, yes, but only if he would take them to the circus? Oh, this is a hard one. I don't remember. Now, I'm going to say A. Yes, because he was Solomon's son. No, even though he was Solomon's son, the ten tribes of the north broke away and did not follow him. Sorry, Gordy. Oh, man. Hey, we're getting close to the end, Judy. It's your toss. Okay. Oh, nice try. Oh. Hey, there you go. Jeroboam was the king of the ten northern tribes. He made special places where the people of his kingdom could go to his church instead of God's temple in Jerusalem. He set up two golden idols for them to worship. What were these two golden idols? Were they A, golden apples, B, golden calves, or C, golden retrievers? It was the golden calves. It was the golden calves. Well done, Judy. All right, Gordy, your turn to toss. 
Oh, oh, right away. Our last question, Gordy, then. Jeroboam was the king in the north. He didn't follow God either. Did he and his family line continue to rule for many, many years? Is the answer A, yes, because they were strong. B, yes, because they took everyone to the circus. Or C, no, because they worshiped idols instead of God. Oh, it's C, because they worshiped idols instead of God. That's right, you got it. Well done, you guys. That's our ring toss review. That was a good game, Deacon and Kim. We remembered a lot of stuff. Yeah, and I'm sure I totally won. I must have gotten the most points. No, uh, -uh. I think I got more points. Hold on, you two. I think the kids at home may have won. They were playing along, and since they could answer all of the questions, they probably got more points than either of you. But, well, okay, I guess that's true. Yeah, I bet they remembered lots of stuff, too. But I still have a question about this king business. Is there still a king today from David's family line? Yes, there is. But he's not ruling an earthly kingdom. He's ruling the heavenly kingdom. Oh, I think I know. It must be Jesus. Hey, I was going to say that. Well, that's right. You mean he was born from David's family line? He sure was. And there was once a sign over his head that said he was a king. Really? When did that happen? Well, when Jesus was hanging on the cross, they put a sign over him that read King of the Jews. Wow, he didn't look much like a king then. No kidding! When he was hanging on the cross, he sure didn't look like a king. But that's just the kind of king he was. He followed just what God wanted him to do, even if it meant going to the cross. He sacrificed his life for us when he went to the cross. He died for our sins. Many people didn't recognize him as the king, but he was. Wow, he is pretty amazing king. He is. If you're looking for a leader, look to Jesus. He can be your king and take away your sin to be your savior. He is the best king who's ever lived. Uh, then maybe I don't want to run for king after all. I'll just follow the leader that God has for me, King Jesus. Good choice, Gordy. If you're really looking for a leader, then you found him. Why don't you close us in prayer? Okay. Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for helping us look for him. If we're looking for a leader, he's the best. In the Bible, there were lots of other leaders like kings. Help us learn from what they did so we don't make the same mistakes, but instead follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thanks, Gordy, and thanks for your help too, Judy. During this carnival series, we've looked at what God wants to see in a leader. We've seen a lot of leaders, some good and some bad, but the best leader is Jesus. God sent Jesus into the world to be a king, although he isn't a normal king. He is a king who is much greater. He is a king of a kingdom we can't even see. It's a spiritual kingdom. When you say Jesus is your king, when you trust that Jesus is your savior, it's important to follow him as your leader all the time. It is important to tell him, I want to trust you in all that I do. That's it for our Kingdom Quest Carnival, boys and girls. But that's not all for Virtual Sunday School. Keep watching for more videos. Take care and have a blessed week.